Hi geology class, I just wanted to give you a short video to um, give you an update on what we'll be doing this week. There was a little bit of confusion. Um, some of the assignments, some of the quizzes, like the coastlines quiz, still had the original date from the beginning of the semester on there. So the due date was this week, but that's, that's wrong. Uh, go by the updated syllabus. The updated syllabus has us doing the second midterm exam this week and then we'll do coastlines next week. So the coastline stuff is up, but uh, it's not due until the end of next week, so not until April 10th. Um, what's due this week on Friday is the midterm exam, the second midterm exam. Um, so here's the topics, and these were on the syllabus too, and I'll go over these really quickly um, in this video, but geologic time, relative dating, radiometric dating, crustal deformation, earthquakes, mass wasting, and then the chapter that we read from McPhee, Los Angeles against the mountains. So that's stuff that could be covered on the on the exam. I'll have the exam up uh, probably uh, tomorrow. That's Tuesday. And uh, you'll have until Friday to turn it in. So please turn it in by the end of the day on Friday, if at all possible. If there's some kind of situation where you can't get it in by then, let me know, email me or whatever. Um, but uh, hopefully you, everybody will be able to get it done by the end of the week. There's only two parts. So part one will be some short answer questions um, that you can complete. Um, you know, I, I think you, you just uh, write a little bit or maybe there's some diagrams. And then uh, part two is a visual quiz. Part two is on world class. So what you'll do is you'll, for part one, you'll you'll download the, um, the Word file. Uh, it's a Microsoft Word file. Type your answers in, save it, and upload the completed one to world class. Part two is a, is, will be just like on your quizzes. It'll be under quizzes in uh, world class and you'll go. And it's a visual quiz just like we, we did in class with the first midterm. There'll be images and you have to tell me what they are. Okay, so the topics uh, that we're covering, don't forget, um, we talked about uh, geologic time. Boy, it seems like a long time ago since we were in the classroom together. Um, we talked about geologic time, so you should have a, a relative um, uh, working knowledge of you know the age of the earth and these different uh, major periods that we talked about and about how long ago they were um, and then we applied those sorts of things looking at relative dating right so which thing if I give you a diagram you'll be able to tell me which thing is older or younger than something else um, and remember our, our principles here so principles of superposition um, older stuff is on the bottom and younger stuff is on top Principle of cross-cutting relationships, like we see here. So if dike A cuts across sill B, it means that sill B must be older, or sill B, just this sill, um, it must be older than dike A, right? Um, so cross-cutting, and then we also talked about unconformities. So here's unconformities uh, in the Grand Canyon. So remember, if you have um, some other kind of rock, like down here we have, um, igneous and metamorphic rocks, and then we have sedimentary rocks on top of it over here. Uh, that's an un unconformity, right? There's a, there's a gap here where erosion must have produced the surface, um, eroded down the, the metamorphic and igneous rocks, and then later on we had deposition, so we have a gap in the record. And we can see uh, here's an angular unconformity here because these layers are not horizontal, and then these layers are horizontal. Uh, and then a disconformity, same kind of thing. We have an erosion surface in here. Um, then after relative dating, we talked about radiometric dating. So remember the idea that we have unstable isotopes like uranium-235. It goes through a series of transitions here um, where it decays randomly, or not randomly, but um, it, it decays to other, other daughter products until you end up with a stable um, daughter product. So in this case, uranium-235 decays to lead-207. And we can use that knowledge of Radio, radioactive things, uh, radioactive isotopes that decay to stable isotopes to date the age of rocks. And here's an example. We look at the ratio of, um, of stable daughter products to unstable parent products uh, to know basically how many half-lives have uh, elapsed. So remember a half-life is when half of the radioactive uh, isotope decays to the daughter product. So if we start out with 100 atoms of the parent, it decays over one half-life to 50 atoms of the parent and 50 atoms of the daughter. So that lets you know that one half-life has elapsed. And we know that the, the amount of time it takes for one, uh, we know that depending on what substance it is, how much time
has elapsed, um, how much time it takes for one half-life to elapse, right, in years. So if we take an igneous rock uh, in some uh, layer of rocks, we can use radioactive radiometric dating to figure out how old that is, and then we can relatively say surrounding rocks if they're older or younger. Um, then we talked about crustal deformation. So remember with crustal deformation, we have folding and faulting. So remember if rocks are deep underground, where they're under a lot of pressure and where they're warmer, um, the rocks will fold. And so here we get an upfold, which is an anticline, and a downfold, which is a syncline. And we can get folding layers. We also get features like domes and uh, basins when we have folding. And remember if rocks are more brittle, they will fault. So in this case, we have um, dip-slip faulting. So this is faulting in sort of the, the vertical dimension. So uh, here, if this is our foot wall over here and our hanging wall over here, if we have tensional stress pulling these rocks apart, the hanging wall moves down uh, relative to the foot wall. And so that's a normal fault. If we compress rocks together, we get um, a reverse fault. In this case, the hanging wall moves up relative to the foot wall because those rocks are being pushed together. Um, a thrust fault is just an extreme version of a reverse fault where um, the, the fault is angling and pushing those rocks over uh, the foot wall block quite a bit. Um, so remember, uh, so you should have a good uh, understanding of your um, folding and faulting. And remember, we have another kind of fault called strike slip fault. So remember the angle of strike, we're talking about sort of the horizontal dimension. We can see the offset in this rice field um, of, uh, of a strike slip fault. So we have um, lateral movement there. And then remember we talked about earthquakes. So earthquakes are when you have movement along a fault that releases energy as seismic waves. So here we can see the epicenter is the point on the earth directly above uh, where a fault moves. The, where the fault moves is called the focus. And remember, when you have that motion along a fault, it generates different kinds of waves. So we talked about uh, P waves, primary waves, and S waves, secondary waves, um, and how P waves move faster than secondary waves, and then surface waves move even slower. And if you have a seismograph, um, this is kind of what it looks like. And remember that lag, um, because P waves move faster than S waves, you can look at how much time elapses between the first P wave and the first S wave, and you can figure out how far away from the epicenter you are of an earthquake. And we did that in-class activity um, based around that. And in that activity, if you have at least three stations where you can calculate that difference um, in P wave versus S wave, then you can calculate the distances how far away the epicenter is, and then where those three circles intersect, that's the epicenter of the earthquake. And we talked about how earthquakes form. We talked about the different faults uh, that, um, that influence earthquakes. Notice the largest earthquakes here in the world um, in recorded history. These are all on subdu in subduction zones where we have a lot of energy released in subduction zones, but you can have earthquakes at other types of plate boundaries and other types of faults as well, uh, convergent boundaries and so on. Um, then we talked about mass wasting. So this is just a, a diagram that shows different kinds of mass wasting. Um, we spent a lot of time, especially on debris flows. Um, I'm sorry, debris flows are up here. Uh, but basically the type of material and how fast it's moving and the process by which it moves the kind of mass wasting. So especially for the visual round, you should be able to identify some of the kinds of mass wasting um, that are uh, involved here. And then finally, we talked about Los Angeles against the mountains, right? So we read that uh, chapter by John McPhee. Here's some of the debris basins in the San Gabriel Mountains at the edge of uh, uh, Pasadena. And... Um, so you should uh, you know, understand some of the things that contribute to those um, landslides and what's going on in this, in this human and natural system here. So the key thing is to study the old slides, study the notes. You've taken the, the quizzes already. You can go back and look at the quizzes and the slides for those quizzes um, and any of the in-class slides. And you should be pretty well prepared uh, for the exam.